When people think of Richard Nixon as a president, usually their mind goes straight to controversy. However, he accomplished many important things when it comes to building relationships with other countries. While Nixon was in the House of Representatives, he was also serving as a member of HUAC, the House Un-American Activities Committee, which worked to identify American communists during the Second Red Scare. While he held a strong opposition to the communist ideas, Richard Nixon thought it was important to have diplomatic relationships with China and the Soviet Union. To do this, he began to work at easing the tensions among the countries by establishing a nature of detente, or easing of tension. Going into his presidency, Nixon made a promise to end the Vietnam War, a war many Americans didn't agree with. In order to accomplish this, he looked to build a relationship with the Soviet Union and China, who were close allies to the communist North Vietnam. In 1972, President Nixon was the first American president to ever visit the People's Republic of China in what would later be known as the week that changed the world. The president and first lady, Pat Nixon, had some fun even while building the diplomatic relationship, as well as discussing important issues of the times with Chinese leaders. This trip included visiting the Great Wall, attending a ballet, and for the president, talking with the leader of China, Chairman Mao Zedong. This talk opened up communication between China and the U.S. and also gave us one of the most iconic pictures from the visit. Additionally, one of the cutest diplomatic agreements of all time was made, China's shipments of giant pandas to the United States in exchange for oxen. President Nixon also worked to establish a relationship with the Soviet Union during this time. Beginning in 1969, American and Soviet leaders had a series of meetings that lasted nearly 10 years. These meetings were called the Strategic Arms Limitation Talks, better known as SALT 1 and 2. In May of 1972, after a decade of tension related to nuclear weapons, Nixon and Brezhnev of the USSR were ready to sit down and negotiate an agreement. Eventually known as the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, this agreement limited each of the two countries to two ABM launch sites per country for the purpose of protection. While these terms changed over the years, establishing an agreement proved negotiations between the U.S. and Soviet Union were possible. The diplomatic relationships built between the United States and these two countries are significant even today. Nixon's trip to China in 1972 is one of many events leading up to the eventual opening of the country to the rest of the world in the late 1970s. China's acceptance of more free market ideas put them on the path to becoming one of the largest trade partners with the United States and most powerful economies in the world. After the period of detente opened the door for a Soviet relationship with American leaders, communication between the two has remained fairly steady. Russia, the most prominent country to emerge from the USSR, has had consistent meetings with American leaders since it was established in the 1990s. While human rights issues and consistent conflict have made leadership of Russia and China difficult to trust, the ability to sit across the table remains invaluable. Ah.